First up, <laughs> uh, Beta Flight 4.4 has finally been released. Yay! Beta Flight 4.4, this is such a big deal. Why is this a big deal? It's a big deal because it's been a while. I mean, not too long because it was much better than the 4.2 to 4.3 gap, right? But uh, Like that was like three years. I don't know. Yeah, but, maybe not quite. But it is cool for a bunch of reasons, I think. Uh, one of the main ones, which is the first thing on the release notes list here, is cloud building. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that we've talked much about it here before, but it's basically mm -hmm. uh, kind of the idea we hinted at a while back um, when we've talked about restrictions on some processors like the 722 and uh, F4, F722 and F411. They have limited memory. So there was a little bit of a concern that at some point they'd run out of memory. And that we'd have beta flight builds that wouldn't fit on them, and they'd be stuck at a certain version, like the F3s, uh, you know, still are basically. Um, but this new cloud build option means that you can select all the things you want to add. And uh, if your board is one of those older boards, as more and more and more stuff comes in, it won't be a concern. You can choose what to keep, and it's all kind of uh, set up there for you. And it's all built yeah. in the cloud. And, and and I think the cloud build is definitely worth calling out because another thing that I've seen is people flashing beta flight. And then having features disappear. And there's two ways that that happens. In fact, I'll just call up Betaflight here real quick. This is not a Q&A stream, so I feel this is a little off topic. But at the, you know, ultimately, it's about getting useful information into people's hands. Um, but what they think they're doing is either they are choosing. Hold on, i got to pick a board. It doesn't matter. Either they're, they're going, what's all this nonsense? And they just click core only. And in fact, this used to be called classic mode. And I incorrectly assumed that it just built Betaflight just like it always did. That is not true. They renamed it to core only. And basically, this leaves a bunch of features out in order to ensure that this build of Betaflight will fit on all flight controllers. But if you use one of those features that gets left out, it's not going to be there. And the other thing is that I don't know if intentionally or unintentionally, like I, I found somebody who said, ah, my JBF7, the VTX pit switch doesn't work user one mode doesn't work. And it was because somehow they had removed the pin IO function here. And then that just got compiled out. So the default settings here will work for most things, but you should be aware that in Betaflight 4.4, there can be whole chunks of Betaflight that just aren't there if you don't choose to add them. And that means that things that you thought used to work just aren't going to work. You may have to go back and recompile. So be aware of that. Also, um, this points out that if you uh, are having trouble figuring out what's supported and some of the stuff is not working properly, um, you can flash the core version and it'll load all the drivers and then you can type support and CLI and it'll give you a list of supported devices so that you can then figure out what you need to include. Oh, uh, that's Yeah, neat. so like I they mentioned, like for missing a barometer, you can try any of the custom defines for a barometer. So like now, you know, there's some of the stuff that's still not going to be there as, uh, you know, as they add new hardware and stuff, um, some of that stuff isn't going to be there automatically, so they've got listed stuff for that. But um, yeah, so there's going to be some a little bit of a learning curve there for people, but in the most cases, uh, that that basic flash is going to work for you pretty well. That just that first one you click on with all the options picked for you. Yeah, it sounds like they're still in the prime. I'm a little bit surprised they went ahead with the release since this stuff isn't finished, but I'm guessing that the reason they did that is because they kind of were just waiting on manufacturers to do the work, and then they were like, all right, we're not going to just wait forever. But, like, a lot, there are still boards that do not have the correct hardware definitions. So when you flash them, like, the board might have a data flash chip for black box, but the beta flight hardware definition doesn't automatically include that when you select that target, and so then... And so they're still relying on users to re to submit support requests so that then they can kind of try to get this all straightened out. But even if you just take the default settings for your target and flash them, and you there may be something blatantly wrong, like, oops, the barometer just isn't included. And then you have to go back and manually add it in or submit a support request. That is going to yep. be rough. I hope that's not too widespread. It is going to be rough for a while. Yeah, hopefully if there's any large gaps in their manufacturers will hop on, but um, I'm not mm -hmm. sure what percentage of support there is for that stuff yet. Yeah, um, okay. uh, also, HDOSD is pretty big. We finally got official support for HDOSD through Betaflight. This is kind of something that was teetering on the edge, and we got MSP DisplayPort options and things. And uh, yeah, now we got an official HDOSD, so that's pretty yeah. cool. The key thing I think is worth pointing out about that is that the DJI O3 Air unit does not support that yet. Uh, and that is on DJI to add. Betaflight is ready. DJI just hasn't supported it yet. And 
I know for a fact that DJI engineers are working on that because the Betaflight devs finally got in touch with the DJI. I think it was the other way around, actually. DJI asked for contact information from Betaflight devs. But the point is that finally, the DJI engineering team and the Betaflight engineering team have managed to go through or around the marketing team <laughs> and people can actually get things done or talking. And it's, it is something they're working on and should be coming soon. But if you have the O3 Air unit and you're excited to try this new feature, it doesn't work yet. But it will soon, hopefully. Um, let's see. So yeah, that's good. We've also got favorites for presets, which is kind of neat. You can save some presets. Mm -hmm. um, but the big, I think a big one for people here, that anybody interested in GPS stuff will be pretty excited about GPS return to home enhancements. They've been working on this since late 4.2, or middle late 4.2. I know there was a ton of work being done on this right at the end of that, and then it all got pushed to, or yeah, at the end of 4.2's, 4.3's development, you know, while 4.2 was still out. And then 4.3 came out without these improvements, but um, yeah, they were, they got them already, and uh, now they're finally out. So there's a bunch of stuff that's been done here, but basically they, they kind of stripped out a lot of that code, I believe, and sort of redid it and made sure all the stuff was making sense, and uh, they worked out a lot of bugs and stuff and all that kind of thing. So uh, basically, now the plan is, you know, instead of the previous system where it kind of just flew to you and then you kind of figure it out from there, yeah, right? Now, uh, return, it'll re reliably return at a set speed, uh, descend at an angle, land within a few meters of the home point, and disarm automatically as soon as it hits the ground because it detects when it hits the ground now. Yeah, and I tested so. this, and it did do those things. Uh, when they say a few meters, I think I was maybe six or seven meters off from my home point. So you're definitely not going to want to rely on it to like land on the deck of a boat. Like it's not doing like a DJI aircraft where it has like a downward facing optical flow sensor and it can anyway, it's not doing any of that stuff. It won't do a pinpoint landing, but it will not do the thing that it used to do, which is where it just kind of flew in circles until it crashed. <laughs> now it will attempt to land and do a fairly decent job of of actually landing. So big, big, uh, big ups to the Betaflight team for all the work that they put on that. 